Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to today's class. It is our fourth lesson on the seventh topic of Form 4, which is called cathode rays and cathode ray tube. As usual, let me comment by giving the quote of the day, which states that procrastination is the grave in which most dreams are buried. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at examples involving our waves displayed on the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope. And the first example reads that the figure below shows the waveform on the screen of an alternating current signal connected to the Y plates of a cathode ray oscilloscope with time base on. Given that the time base control is 5 milliseconds per division and the Y gain is at 100 volt per division, determine part A, the period of the alternating current signal. Remember from waves 1 and waves 2, we simply defined a, a period as the time taken to make one complete oscillation. So similarly here, uh, because uh, the period uh, is always measured uh, or the time is measured using the time base, and we said that the time base is always connected to the x plates of a cathode ray oscilloscope, and we said x plates are responsible for a uh, horizontal deflection of the beam. Therefore, when we are counting the period, we are going to count the number of horizontal division. The reason being, the period is measured uh, on the time base, and the time base is usually connected on the X plates, which are responsible for horizontal deflection of the beam. Therefore, we are going to count the number of horizontal divisions that are making one complete oscillation, because period is the time taken to make one complete oscillation. So if I start from this particular point, uh, the wave we are having, this is half an oscillation plus another half an oscillation, which gives us one complete oscillation. So we are taking a horizontal, that is one, two, three, and four horizontal divisions to make one complete oscillation. Therefore, we are given the uh, time-based control that uh, five milliseconds represent one division. What about the number of divisions which are making one complete uh, wave, which is one, two, three, four. So if five milliseconds are equivalent to one division, what about four divisions which are making one complete oscillation or the period? So uh, the period will simply be four divisions over one division multiplied by five milliseconds, which will give us 20 uh, milliseconds. But we know that the SI unit of time is seconds, therefore I'm going to convert uh, the 20 milliseconds into seconds. Then we know that a thousand milliseconds is equals to one second. What about 20 milliseconds? So that will be 20 milliseconds over 1,000 milliseconds multiplied by 1 second, which will give you 0 0.02 seconds as the period of this particular alternating current signal. Then part B, we are told to find the frequency of the alternating current signal. Uh, from waves 1, we said that frequency is equal to the reciprocal of period. So frequency is 1 over period, and we have already computed the period in part A as 0 0.02 seconds. Therefore, frequency will be 1 over period, which is 1 over 0 0.02, which will give you 50 hertz as the frequency of the AC signal. Then part C, we are told to find the peak voltage of the input signal. Remember, a peak voltage is always measured uh, by the Y gain uh, or on the vertical axis. Uh, so we are given the Y gain to be 100 volt per division. So that means uh, each vertical division is representing 100 volts. So for example, this is 100 volts, this is 200 volts, this is 300 volts. So each division, uh, each vertical division is represented by the Y gain because the Y gain is always connected on the Y plates, and remember, Y plates are responsible for vertical uh, deflection of the beam. That is why uh, for the Y gain, we are simply counting the number of vertical divisions. So uh, for us to find the peak voltage, peak voltage we said is equals to Y gain multiplied by the number of vertical division. So the division, we are counting them from the zero line uh, or from this uh, mean line, which is representing the zero voltage. So from the zero voltage line, we are having a vertical voltage to the peak. So this is our peak. Uh, remember, a peak can either be a crest or a trough. That is measured from the uh, zero volt line, which is, this is our zero voltage line. This uh, line in black. So from the zero volt line to the peak, we are having one, two, three divisions. Similarly, from the zero volt line to our trough, we are having one, two, three divisions. Therefore, the number of vertical divisions from the mean line or to the peak are three divisions. 
then you are given the y gain as 100 volt per division so if 100 volts are equivalent to one division what about three divisions so that will be three divisions over one division multiplied by 100 volt which will give you 300 volt as your peak voltage then part d we are told to find the peak to peak voltage remember we showed that peak peak to peak simply means two times the peak voltage yeah? for example peak to peak will be uh, from here up to this particular trough so in between we have you are having one two three four five six vertical divisions so you simply take six multiplied by a hundred uh, which will give you 600 volt or alternatively you simply take the peak voltage then you multiply by two so two multiplied by peak voltage will be two times 300 volts which is the our peak voltage which will give you 600 uh, volts next we look at the television tube which is usually abbreviated as a tv tube so it is simply a modified cathode ray tube with very minimal differences so it has an electron gun which is responsible for producing the electron beam remember for the case of a cathode ray oscilloscope it also had uh, an electron gun but which was responsible for producing electric beam so notice that for television tube we are talking of electron beam but for the case of a cathode ray tube we are talking of electric beam now the main difference comes in uh, the deflection system remember for the case of a cathode ray uh, tube we were having the x plates and the y plates uh, which were responsible for the horizontal and vertical deflection of the uh, beam but for the case of a television tube it has what we are calling the deflecting coils which are responsible for uh, the horizontal and vertical deflection of the electron beam remember uh, for this particular deflection coils one of them could be a north pole then the other one is a south pole so that it is responsible for a uh, horizontal deflection of this particular uh, electron beam similarly for this vertical uh, deflecting coils one of them could be uh, a north pole then maybe the other one is a south pole so that it is responsible for the vertical deflection of this particular beam remember for the for the case of a uh, cathode ray tube we had the x plates uh, then we were connecting uh, an electric circuit uh, on the terminals of those particular x plates such that one of the plates was positive then the other one is negative such that in between them we had an electric uh, field uh, which was responsible for the horizontal deflection of the beam then similarly the y plates we were connecting them to an, to an external uh, circuit uh, which ensured that one of the plate is positive then the other one is negative so that in between we had an uh, electric field which was responsible for the vertical deflection of the beam so the same case here when we have a north pole and a south pole here we are going to have a magnetic field uh, which will displace this particular electron beam or deflect it horizontally similarly this could be a south a north pole then maybe this is a south pole such that we have a magnetic field in between which is responsible for uh, the vertical def the deflection of the electron beam so the main differences between a cathode ray tube and a television tube is that one in a television tube lines are observed on the screen yeah on the screen you are going to observe uh, lines whereas for the case of a cathode ray tube we were having dots uh, or simply a spot uh, which was being observed on the screen you can just refer from our previous class we are able to show that then the second difference is that in a television tube the deflection of the electron beam is by magnetic field so that magnetic field is coming into place because one of the uh, deflecting coil is north pole the other one is uh, south polar uh, such that we have a magnetic field in between that is uh, deflecting this electron beam same case for the vertical uh, coils one of them could be north pole then the other one a south pole such that we have a magnetic field which is uh, uh, responsible for the vertical uh, deflection of this particular electron beam so the deflection is by use of magnetic field for the case of a television tube while in a cathode ray tube the deflection is done by electric field because the x plates we were connecting an electric circuit on them uh, which ensured that one of the plates is positive then the other one is negative such that we had a potential difference in between that created an electric field same case for y plates one of them is positive then the other one is uh, negative of course based on the uh, external circuit connected on them so if one plate is positive the other one is negative there is going to be a potential difference in between which will create an electric field that is responsible for both uh, horizontal and vertical deflection of the beam then uh, but if you are asked to give just one difference uh, between electric uh, that is between a tv 
and a CRT tube. The main difference, you should give this one. Huh? This is the main difference. You say that for the case of a TB tube, uh, a television tube, uh, the deflection is by electron a beam, but for the case of uh, a cathode ray a tube, the deflection is by electric beam. So this is the main difference. But if you are given maybe two differences, then you can also state the first difference here. But if you're asked to just give one difference, then give the second difference because that is the main difference. Then magnetic fields are usually preferred over electric field. The reason being they give a wider deflection of the beam. So this makes it possible to work with a wider uh, screen with relatively short tube. Yeah, for example, you've seen uh, the smart TVs. They usually have a very wide screen but a uh, very short tube. So it simply means that they are using magnetic field. So that is the reason why magnetic fields are preferred over electric field. So because magnetic field will give you a wide deflection of the beam, so it makes it possible for you to use a wider screen with a very short uh, tube. But for the case of electric field, this may not be possible. Then a colored television has three electron guns, each carrying the color detail of uh, that is the color detail of one of the three primary colors. That is the red, green, and blue color. Then the screen has a matrix of different color uh, emitting phosphor dots such that when stimulated, they give different uh, colored pictures. Remember we said phosphor is simply a material uh, which when hit with the electron or uh, magnetic, uh, that is the electron beam or magnetic field, it simply fluoresces or it glows, uh, hence producing the uh, pictures. Lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the concepts that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that procrastination is the grave in which most dreams are buried. So the quote is simply encouraging us to have a sense of urgency uh, towards everything we do, especially when we are trying to achieve our dreams. So the quote is reminding us that unless we prioritize our dreams, we will never create enough time to work on them. Therefore, it's okay to plan, it's okay to wish, it's okay to lay strategies on how you want to achieve your dream. But until the day and the time, you will move from a state of strategizing, a state of wishing, and a state of planning to a state of actually doing or going to a state of action mode, that is the only time that you'll be able to achieve your dreams. Remember, so many people are wishing to start, uh, but they don't have that. They have what we are calling the, the fear, the fear for failure. They're just uh, afraid of starting. How I encourage you not to be one of the people who are afraid to start. Just start pursuing your dream, take the necessary actions, then in the end, you are going to get the results that you want. And lastly, remember that we all have 24 hours in a day. Therefore, what determines whether you become successful or you don't achieve your dreams is how you set your priorities. Remember, we have equal time. So you can't say that you don't have time. We all have equal time. It's about setting priorities. It's about uh, what you hold as important because whatever you make as a priority, you will always create time for it. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.